Hey, this is RJ May, and you're watching Mr. Mario 2011. Hey, so what is going on everyone? It is me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how to install a mod chip in a Sega Saturn. Yes, I'm going old school with this tutorial and installing it on a near 20-year-old system now. I believe it's 20 years old now, but anyways, I'm doing this because I just got a Saturn. I've been wanting to install a mod chip in a Saturn for a while just to say I can do it. And in addition to that, it is quite an easy mod chip to install. And fun fact, it is the only Sega CD-based console that does require a mod chip to play backup games and all that, so that's pretty interesting to me. But anyways, if you look on screen, I'm going to show you all a list of things that you're going to need for this install. First off, of course you're going to need a Sega Saturn console and the mod chip. I'm going to be using the Universal V3 mod chip, which you can secure from SegaStyle.com. I'm also going to be using their guide as well too, and I followed their guide, so I'm going to be using pictures from them. All the links are going to be down below in the description, and I highly recommend you checking it out as well, because I'm only going to be covering one model of the Sega Saturn, and there are four different ones available. Now, if you are proceeding with this tutorial, as I said, there's four different models. There is the Model 1, the Model 2, and there's another one that is a Sanyo type. Uh, there's tutorials available for all of them, but I'm going to be doing the Model 2, and I'm going to be doing the 32-pin model version of the Model 2, uh, due to the fact that once you open up your Saturn, you'll see how it is. But the biggest difference is the Model 2 has circular buttons and the Model 1 has oval shaped buttons. Now, in addition to having those two big components, you're also going to need a soldering iron, some solder, some time, some patience, a little bit of skill, and you're also going to need electrical tape and a Phillips head screwdriver to insulate the chip and then, you know, of course, open up the system. Now, some of those things are tangible, some of them are not, but just be patient with this and be confident and you could be good to go with this. Now I also have a list of optional items as well too, and first off is isopurple alcohol and q-tips. For any type of electronic handiwork like this, I always recommend a high percentage of alcohol. So I use 91% isopurple alcohol and q-tips to clean up my contacts and all that stuff. I also use flux. Now it's just a type of thing that you can spread on contacts and it looks really messy, but it makes connections stronger and it makes it so much easier when you're soldering. A little bit of cardboard is nice as well too, you just need a tiny bit to cut out, about a little bigger than the mod chip itself, and I used it just because I put the mod chip on cardboard and then I insulated it even better and stuck everything together with electrical tape, and then also having a second type of tape would really help out. This would be like masking tape of some kind, any type of double sided tape. I also used a type of permanent fixture type tape that I use to, you know, stick things to my walls and all that in my apartment, uh, just so I can have the chip stick easily to the system and not move around anywhere. Now before we officially get into this, I also want to say that any damage incurred to your own system is not a fault of my own or Sega Styles or anyone else's. You are doing this at your own discretion, but if you understand that, let's go ahead and continue. Now that we're continuing with the install, what you want to do is flip your system upside down while everything's disconnected and go ahead and unscrew all the screws that you can find. There's just four or five screws on the system and once you have them, you want to go ahead, flip it right side up and open up the top of the system and you'll be able to see your drive. Board. Now what you want to do is look at the drive board and go to Sega Style site that I have linked down below in the description and find which system you have based on your drive board. As you can see, I have a Model 2 32 pin IC Sega Saturn. As I said, there's four different models and I have one of them. So I'm going to be showing you with my 32 pin Model 2 system. However, everyone's system is going to slightly differ. You can still follow along with this, but it might not be the exact same as your own system. Now, if you go ahead and grab the Universal V3 mod chip, which I will be using, as you can see, I have the power cable already soldered into the 5 volt line. And if you look at the bottom, there are four ribbon ports. Now, this is where you need to determine which one you are using. The top two ports are for a Model 2 Sega Saturn. The bottom two ports are for a Model 1 Sega Saturn. I'm going to be using the Model 2 ports for this tutorial. 
Now, flip your mod chip around the back, and according to the diagram provided by SegaStyle.com, there are five points, A, B, C, D, and E. Since we are doing a 32-pin Model 2 system, we can ignore points D and E, and we are going to go ahead and bridge together points A and B on the mod chip. Make sure you look this up according to your specific console, as it is going to vary. Now that you have the points you need to bridge isolated, what you need to do is go ahead and clean up the chip. I just dip my Q-tip into some 91% isopurple alcohol and clean up the contacts really well that I'm about to solder. Once you do that, you can go ahead and take a little bit of flux, just dab it onto the other side of your Q-tip, the clean side, and just go ahead and smear it on there. Now, you don't want to completely glob it on just yet, because you don't want to bridge together too many points, as if there are a bunch of points on the mod chip, as you can see, but you just want to put a little bit on there, but enough to make an impact. Now, in order to bridge these two points together, once you have everything prepared, what you need to do is just go ahead and touch the solder to the point as well as with the soldering iron, and you want to get some solder on each point, and then you just want to glob a little bit more on there between the two solder balls on the two points so that those two solder balls will become connected and you're able to join the points that way. That's how it's going to work with this, that's how you bridge in case you did not know, but once you have the two points that you need or more bridged on this chip, you should be alright and we can continue with this. Now, great, that's pretty much all the soldering you have to do to the chip itself. Now, I did not cover soldering over the Kynar wire or the wrapping wire for the power line due to the fact that I had it pre-soldered. Now, you can get a cable pre-soldered for your power for an extra dollar if you buy this chip. If not, just go ahead and get some wrapping or Kynar wire and solder one end of it to the end of your chip that has 5 volt there and the other end to the point that I'm going to show you on the console later. Now, what I did was I took a little bit of cardboard from a box I had and made it just a tiny bit bigger than the mod chip itself. I put the mod chip on top of it and I'm now taking electrical tape and just insulating the chip itself. I'm insulating over the Model 1 ports because I'm not going to use them and I also wrap the tape above the three chips that you see on the top of the mod chip. As long as you do not block any of the ports that you're actually using, you should be okay. Now you do have to insulate the chip, it warns you several times in the tutorial if I'm speaking correctly, but it does warn you several times that if you put the bottom of the chip bare onto the metal uh, of the console itself, which it's pretty much all metal when you look at it, you will easily short out the chip. So you need to minimum wrap the bottom of the chip with electrical tape. What I'm doing for that extra insulation and padding, I just took a little bit of cardboard and then I wrapped some electrical tape around the mod chip and the cardboard so it's nice and padded and protected. This insulation is required. You don't have to have cardboard, but I guarantee you probably do have some cardboard around where you live. Now, as you can see, your mod chip should look something like this if you insulated it as well as I did. You're also going to get two ribbons with your mod chip which are required. There's going to be a thinner one and there's going to be a thicker one. You're going to just look at the width of them. The one that is wider is going to be the one that goes on the top port for the Model 2, and the one that is not as wide, so the thinner one, is going to go on the bottom port, which is for the Model 1. Now, for this tutorial, I'm only going to be using the thicker one, so the wider one, so the one that goes on the top port is the only one you need, but go ahead, hold on to the bottom one just in case. Alright, now go ahead and bring your insulated mod chip over to where your console is. You just need, as I said, the wider one on the top port. And what you want to do is take the ribbon that is already connected from the motherboard to your disk drive and disconnect it from the disk drive and then connect it into the bottom port on your mod chip. And what you want to do, you're going to have to kind of fight with it a little bit. It looks a bit intimidating, but trust me, you can get it. You want to go ahead and flip the mod chip upside down. And with the free ribbon that you had, the one that was on the top port of the mod chip, you want to go ahead and take that ribbon and then pop it onto the drive board on your system itself in the ports that you just pulled that ribbon out of. Now, after fighting with this Pandora's box for a bit, your mod chip should be upside down like that. What you want to do is just flip it over onto the right side, and you'll have a nice little crevice that you can fit your mod chip in right there. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and stick it onto the console itself so it doesn't move around. 
Now what I do for this is I just take some scotch permanent mounting tape that I use for walls and all that. I picked this up at Walmart a while ago and I just take off a tiny strip that can go on one side of the mod chip. I actually put it on the wrong side here and then I have to transpose it onto the other side but just put it onto the side that is going to be closest to the plastic at the end of the console so that way you can go ahead and flip your mod chip over and then it will stick there. Now you don't have to use what I'm using. You could use any type of adhesive really so you could like double side some tape like masking tape or buy actual double-sided tape anything like that and that way you'll have a nice insulated chip that's going to be snug and it's not going to move around anywhere in the system now let's go ahead and sit back and look at the system you're almost done you're just going to need that v5 power cable soldered onto the console itself so what you need to do is you need to find the power plug and what I'm doing is I'm just going to take the power cable and run it underneath the ribbon that connects from the motherboard to the drive board that you see on the left of the system. And then you need to go ahead and prep the point available on the power plug. Now it's going to be the second one from the top. And what you just do, as I said, like before, you're just going to go ahead and clean up with some isopropyl alcohol and put a little bit of flux on there. And it's a very easy point to install this on. Now, as you can see, once it's been all prepared, you just want to go ahead, take some solder and solder it onto the point and tin the point itself like I'm doing right there. You can go ahead, glob your solder on a bit, but just be sure to not melt any of the surrounding plastic. Then what you want to do is go ahead, take the other end of your power cable that is soldered onto your chip. Make sure it's nice and straight and everything. You might have to fix it up a little bit like what I'm doing right there. And then go ahead and just touch the points together and solder it on. As I said, this is a pretty easy point, so it's nothing too bad. But just be sure that you get it safely on there because this is the power plug. So it's quite important that everything is still going to work. Now that you have your cable running under that ribbon and you have everything soldered in, what you want to do is go ahead and secure the cable down. So what I'm doing is I just take off a little tiny few pieces of tape and just kind of press down the cable to the chassis of the system, to the metal of it, and just do it on a few spots, but just make sure that cable is not going to move anywhere so it will be nice and secure in case you move your system or anything like that. Anyways, we're now at the end of this tutorial. Congratulations, you have just installed the mod chip in your Sega Saturn if you followed this. What you want to do is go ahead, take the top of your Saturn, pop it on there, check all the buttons, make sure they work just fine, and then go ahead and flip it over and screw everything back in, and be sure to go ahead and pop the battery door back onto the area where you have to replace your battery or, you know, the expansion slot because that does come out while you're unscrewing it in the first place. Anyways, I hope this tutorial helped you all out. I hope it might have interested some of you all as well because this is quite a fun mod to do and I am happy I was able to do this and again big shout out to Sega Style for all the help and the mod chip and everything. Anyways it's Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you for watching everyone.